Welcome back, fellow gamers. I want to talk to you today about legacy, specifically what the future holds for this format as it stands now. So this week, or earlier this week, Star City Games announced that they've been cutting back some of their tournament winnings and the way that prize structure was handed out. And a lot of people saw this as pretty much the final axe swing for legacy. Like they the game itself or the format itself has been dwindling lately with less and less support you know it's being taken off uh certain circuits it's being featured less it's harder to find prominent tournaments for this format a lot of people are like well this this is pretty much the end the reason that star city games stated that they were you know making these cuts was that if they had not made these cuts they would have to stop it altogether because they're not going to have enough money to really keep the lights on now, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing there. I'm drawing a lot from what the article said. They didn't say they're in financial trouble, but they did say that this was costing them a lot of money. And then you have a lot of people saying that, well, now it's the chance for like a Channel Fireball or a Card Kingdom or another big online vendor to really pick up the mantle and carry Legacy. Now, I don't think that's true. If you look at Star City Games, Star City Games says that they're not able to justify the spending and they're the biggest online retailer. Odds are, Card Kingdom, uh, like <laughs> Channel Fireball, all these guys aren't going to be able to do that if they if if Star City Games can. Star City Games' biggest competitor is TCG Player, and TCG Player, all it is is it's a conglomerate of a bunch of different small vendors, but they offer great prices. There was a great guarantee, so they draw, they siphon a lot of money from that. And furthermore, the amount of money that it requires to buy into Legacy. Is fairly high. It's that's not anything new. You can go into any video, any forum that talks about legacy, and that's one of the things is that big barrier. The big price spikes have already happened. They've happened years ago with the dual lands, with you know the power nine. Power nine has been quite some time that they've been priced out, so nix that part. But like <laughs> essential cards that are on the reserve list, I'm not saying they're at their ceiling because you never know, and you never know what can happen in the game. But they're fairly high, and for Star City Games, they've made their money off of these cards. They're not they're not looking at further propelling. They don't have no additional incentive. Like they're holding tournaments not for the good of the community. They're holding it so that people buy more product from them, <laughs> so that they can then play in the tournaments that they're sponsoring. And if they're seeing that turnout for Legacy isn't there, and the demand for selling cards isn't there, then they're going to cut it out, or they're going to reduce the amount of money that they invest in the format. I think that's what's happening now is and you're seeing that kind of a shift where legacy is going to go one of two ways it stays afloat as a fringe category for the elite of the elite or, or just people who've grown up with the cards and still have them and those people are, are grumpy that they can only play in a few certain events but they're in their own little circle and they're cool the other thing that happens is that the format completely dies there's not enough interest to get tournaments going or to invest money into new uh, player bases Old cards get destroyed, they're lost in fires, floods, tornadoes, whatever. And then you're going to just see the death of the form. And what happens there is you're going to see card prices tank. Now, two things are going to happen. One, the people who have invested in these cards are going to panic, and they're going to sell off their cards, pumping more cards into the market, increasing supply, therefore driving down prices even further. And then two, you're going to have the people that want to keep the cards because they want to bounce back. And that does happen. Uh, they're hoping for a bounce back. Whatever means necessary, they're, they're going for it. This is the opportunity where Wizards can then abolish the reserve list. Why, you ask? Because the people who have their cards that are seen as an investment should realize that cards are valuable when there's demand for it. And if Legacy doesn't exist, or there's no demand for Legacy, their cards are not worth anything. Scarcity alone will not drive prices. There has to be demand. And that's something that some people don't like to say, or they refuse to believe it. Uh, yeah, you know, there are certain rarities where there might not be a demand, you just need to find that right collector. But that's an extreme scarcity situation. I don't think any card in Magic's history of printing is scarce enough to drive up price on scarcity alone unless somebody completely buys out a certain copy of let's say like a power nine card like an ancestral recall and they own the market like a 99 98 percent market then you'll see somebody who's pissed off of of a reprint 
but if you're holding on to, let's say, a playset of Volcanic Islands, and you see it dropping, dropping, dropping because nobody's playing uh, Legacy, and yes, I know there is Vintage, but that's in itself a fringe format, and that does not really drive prices to in of itself. But what you're gonna see here with Legacy is that as soon as people are able to acquire these cards, you're gonna have people who want the original cards. Much like you see people want original printing of cards. When I was trying to get rid of my Cryptic Commands a few years ago after they spiked, I couldn't get rid of my Modern Master Editions. Everybody wanted Loring. Like, nobody wanted the new printing at the time. They were just forget about it. Something similar will definitely happen with these older cards. They will become, they will stay valuable simply because people want the original printings, white border or black border. It doesn't matter when it comes to these things. Unless the art completely blows like the, the old art out of the way and people just flock to it, you're going to see an increase again in legacy staples that have been on the reserve list that people will need to get. So it's going to drive the market if they treat it somewhat similar to the way they've been treating Eternal Masters and Modern Master cards with the low reprint frequency. And I believe at this point, Wizards of the Coast is able to get away with with reprinting reserve list cards and doing away with the reserve list. I do think that this is really a tipping point where if Wizards is really serious about Legacy, they need to decide what they want to do with the format and what are they going to do with the pool of cards because there are just too many cards in circulation for some scarcity alone to drive prices. Like there will be a significant drop once people start, stop playing Legacy. And at this point, you're going to see people who own the cards say, Wizards, do something, help the format out. Well, helping the format out is injecting more cards into the format. I hope that's where they go. And again, this might be a pie in the sky scenario. Maybe I'm off my rocker. I just see this as an opportunity for Wizards of the Coast to really inject life back into Legacy if they care about the format. And I, I have a feeling they do. You kind of want to show off your old cards. You want to show where the game has come from. You also want to be able to have that factor of, wow, this card is, you know, 25 years old and people are still playing with it. It gets people talking. People who are non-Magic the Gathering players will sometimes look through my cards like when I tell them I, I play the game and they come by an old card like, oh wow, that's so old. And then they, they get more information. They get really involved in the cards and that does entice people to play. They see a rich history. So there you have it. That's my opinion on the changes that are going to be happening to the payout structure and how that affects Legacy. I personally see it as the night's getting darker before the sun rises. That's how I choose to look at it. I hope that is the case. I hope I'm not off my rocker. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to check out some other videos, you can check out these videos here. Uh, also, if you'd like to subscribe, which might sound crazy, I know. <laughs> but if you like, if you want to know when I get updates or when I go live for certain streaming, you can click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Thanks again.